In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a quick rig for a bouncy ball so you can start practicing your animation principles. I'm Luciano and welcome to the Adventures of Lollipop Man. This episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. What's up everyone, I'm Luciano and welcome to the Adventures of Lollipop Man. In today's video, we're going to take a quick look of how to create a very simple bouncing ball rig so you can actually practice the principles of animation. Although not all the time it's important that you actually know how to build the rigs that you're using, learning a little bit about how they're created will help you then be more self-sufficient. So before we go into the video, remember to support the channel by liking, subscribing, or even getting in on my Patreon. Yeah, we got one of those too, right here, link below. And now to the video. As you can see, we're here on Blender 3.0. This is basically this, just a new number, not, not that it has many new features, it's just a new number. And this is like the Lollipop Man, the Adventures of Lollipop Man edition, which basically has my, my setup, but it's the same thing that you're using at home. So, first of all, we need a ball. And we're going to create a quick ball using a sphere. I'm going to make sure I zoom into it. I'm going to make this ball something like 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters. And as you can see, I changed the dimensions, which is basically the dimensions in respect to the world. For some reason, I am upside down. So now I'm gonna make sure that the ball is sitting on the line of the floor, right? So that should be something like that. Maybe 20.2, yeah, better. Right, so we got a ball right there. Gonna add some colors so we can see it rotating and stuff like that. So just gonna add white color and then maybe a secondary color, which could be orange or whatever. Just going to select this guys right here, assign it to that and make sure that this is shown in the viewport color like that. And now I'm going to make shade smooth. Now we got up a ball and if we rotate it, we can see it's rotating, right? Just simple stuff so we can actually read it when we're animating. Because if we only had one flat color, you wouldn't see if it's rotating correctly, correctly or not. Now that we have our ball, we want to apply this transform so that it doesn't move from here. Like if I press Alt G right now, you can see that it goes back to the zero, but I want this to be my new zero. So to do that, you can press Control A and apply your scale. As you can see now, if the scale goes back to one, the dimension is still the same because it's still the same measurement in the world. Then if I try to do the same with location, the problem is that the origin will go to the zero of the scene, changing the pivot of the ball. And I just don't want that. But what I can do is move the locations to deltas. And now you can see it's zero. And in the deltas, we actually have that transform. But the location remains zero for us and the origin stays in the same place. So now we can, if I move this ball around and rotate it, I can press Alt R or G. S and it will go back to this position, which is the one that I want. So from then on, we're ready to start rigging. Now I'm going to create an armature single bone and now I'm going to scale it over to the 3D cursor, right? So with the point, now I can scale and I'm going to go X ray and more or less put it in a way that it covers the entire thing. So this is going to be what we're going to call my root bone, right? Which will move the entire rig and we can position it. If you see my video on the root control, this is basically that same control. And we're just going to leave it right there. We call it root with F2. You can just call the naming thing and you're ready. So now we're going to go into the armature panel and I'm going to hide this bone in another layer. I'm going to create a second bone gonna scale it down again and this is going to be my deformation bone the bone that's going to be stretched so what we're going to do is we're going to have our root we're going to have a controller that allows you to rotate the sphere right then one at the top that will allow you to stretch it up and down from moving it there but with a pivot down and another one from the bottom will allow you to do the exact same thing, but to the top. So you can always stretch it. If it just bounces on a wall, then you can stretch it to the one side. If it bounces to the other side, you can stretch it from the other side. 
should be good to be is enough right then one control to move it from the center of gravity which would be kind of like the center of the sphere and then the root control that's kind of what we need the reason also all of these are kind of separate controls is because it's going to make it easier for us to separate most of the transforms and work with them independently it's going to make it a little bit more organized for our brains so we can kind of work piece by piece so easy enough this is going to be my mch in blender there's a thing where def mch and org capitals and with a dash next to them if you put any of these prefix in any bone when you're using auto keying with something like whole character those bones won't get key at all and so that's pretty good it's a bit of skewer i reckon but it works really well so for instance this bone i don't want it to be keyed this is going to be just a helper to make the mechanism work how i want it so at the top we're going to extrude a bone with E and I'm going to do the same at the bottom and I'm going to disconnect both of them with Alt P. I'm going to do disconnect bone and clear parents. And right now I just need to name them. So this is going to be top stretch and then bottom. And I'm just missing the one that's going to make the sphere rotate. So I'm just going to get rid of all these annotations. There we go. So I'm going to select the sphere and then line my cursor to select it because it needs to rotate from that very center then i'm going to create a new bone from there and i'm going to make it maybe just that long and i'm going to call this rotation why not so the rotation bone should follow this guy here because this is the one that's going to stretch why do we want it in that order because we want to be able to keep rotating the ball in any direction that it's stretched without changing the orientation of that stretch well let's see what i mean i'm gonna connect the sphere to that bone right there Control p set parent to bone and so now i can rotate this bone right and now if i scale this bone in that direction and then it rotates i don't want this to happen i want the the, the sphere to keep rotating even if it's stretched in one direction so if this guy right here is a parent of that bone so he and now i stretch this guy but then rotate the one that's actually directly connected to the sphere you can see that now the shape is preserved right even if the sphere is rotating so it's kind of cool so it makes it a little bit easier to handle right now let's go back to that so this guy is connected properly already rotation stretch now this one will control the stretch of this bone with to do that we're doing, gonna do a constraint called stretch 2 so with Control shift c you can just go and stretch 2. you can also use the menu pose it's somewhere here constraints add with targets and then this guy has to be a child of this one to do the opposite so from from here i can just move this guy up and down you can see it stretches and squashes right and then i can still rotate this guy from its own pivot and it's still doing the desired effect now i want to be able to move this in a proper way i think it's better to have another control so i'm going to select this guy this guy go control p keep offset so now we got the top stretch moving from the top the bottom stretch moving from the bottom and then the rotation still working and that's all fine now we need our control that should go in the middle which is this guy just created now we're gonna call him cog center of gravity and then the top the top stretch the bottom stretch and uh, should be children of the center of gravity and then we're gonna bring back our other guy and our other guy called root just to make this easier on the eyes and now that i don't need the mc8 stretch i'm just going to move it to another layer so i'm going to turn on this root now and so the cog and the root cog should be a child of the root and so i'm going to keep the offset now i have the root cog stretch up and down there we go and 
should be pretty much good to go. Now, we just need to lock and create some pretty shapes to make it more readable. I'm gonna create a circle, scale this circle down, and this is going to be my root. So, I'm just gonna make a shape that kind of represents this is the master controller of the rig. I'm gonna make this uh, bounding box center. So yeah, it points everywhere basically. And so the root component is going to, in the panel where we have the viewport display, we can go custom object. You can see it's misaligned. So I just need to rotate my shape to orient it to the bone like so. And now go to edit mode and in edit mode, reorient it back to look kind of like I want it. So now this shape called root, I'm just going to put into a new collection, pressing M, new collection. This is going to be widgets, right? And almost there. So things we want to do now to prepare ourselves for animation, just going to select all the bones, hold alt and switch to rotations to Euler. Then the top and bottom, we only want to be able to move them in the Y axis. So all of the rest want to be locked. The rotation one, we want to only be able to rotate, rotate it and then this one it's okay that it's free and this one is okay that it's completely free i want to turn off my relationship lines because they're awful the most awful thing ever and we probably want some color to kind of give a little bit of contrast to what we're looking at here so i'm going to go to the bone groups i'm going to create three bone groups one's going to be red one's going to be blue and one's going to be yellow i'm going to make red blue yellow and so i'm going to make this one yellow actually no this one let's make it blue this one yellow you just assign them and then this one red something like so maybe this one red and this one and this one something like that as you can see they're much easier to see now that they have a base color and since this one is the main that you want to animate that's gonna stay yellow but these ones, these ones, these ones, in this case, because they're just like different bones, we just create a separate color for that one and make it green in this particular case. Green. And so we get, yeah, something like that. And that should be it. Your sphere is ready. And so now you just make sure that you use the whole character selected bones only which will allow you to do two things when you don't select you don't have anything selected and press i it will key all of the bones available in the rig but it will only key the ones that don't have a lock right so it's actually super clean to use now if you select any bones it will still key only those bones but only the ones without a lock and so now you're basically ready to start animating. So make sure you just use whole character, selected bones only, and that's basically it. You are now ready to animate. You can still do some tweaks to like, like rename stuff like ball, rig, and then move this guy out of that collection to a ball, rig, collection. 
something like that and then move this guy over here and i don't think we have a camera so i don't have a I don't need a cinematography collection and yeah that should be kind of it and so you can now save your rig and replace this crappy one and make sure that yeah x-ray is turned off so now you're ready to use it for creating a bouncing ball which we'll see in another video let me know in the comments below what to do with it and thank you again for being here remember you can like subscribe and also join my patreon and see me next time mm -hmm.